Hi everybody, this is Danae and today's video is all about intermediate piano repertoire. I've already made a video on piano technique repertoire that I find very helpful and also on the, for me, ideal repertoire for beginners when playing the piano. So this video is kind of the next in the series where I chose some pieces that I find are the perfect bridge between the beginner repertoire and the full-on hard pieces that you play as an advanced player. I tried to cover the entire intermediate spectrum, so some pieces are leaning more towards the easier side and some are leaning more towards the harder, almost advanced pieces side. So I hope that you will find something for you in this selection and if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. So before I get into the video, I just wanted to mention that, as you can probably see from my surroundings, I'm still in Greece. This is my last day in Greece. My festival is over and I stayed here for a couple days of holiday. And tomorrow I'm going back to Berlin, to my home in Germany. So if there are some sounds from insects or wind, I hope that they won't distract you. <laughs> so the first piece that I want to mention, or actually the first set of pieces, are Beethoven sonatas. Growing up as a piano student, Beethoven sonatas were a vital core part of my learning and not only my piano learning and technique, building technique, but also of my understanding and learning of music. My teacher at the time, Professor Karl-Heinz Kemmerling, lay a very big value on learning Beethoven sonatas and really learning this music properly and I find that very helpful until today that I learned many Beethoven sonatas when I was young. So I wanted to mention a couple of sonatas that he would always give his younger or young-ish students to learn. One of them was Beethoven Opus 2 number no. 1 which is, I find, a great sonata to start with. It's technically not the easiest, but it is musically, I think, very understandable and a great one to get into the Beethoven sonatas. Another one that he would suggest is Beethoven sonata Pathétique. The Pathétique is also similar, technically really not too hard. I mean, I'm speaking, of course, compared to the other Beethoven sonatas. And also musically, you can definitely understand it and a great introduction to Beethoven. The third beginner, let's say, sonata that I would mention is Beethoven Tempest, so Opus 31 number 2, or also Beethoven Opus 10 number 1. I think with either of these four sonatas, I would feel quite secure getting into the world of Beethoven sonatas. I would definitely not suggest to start with one of the late ones. That would be pretty intimidating. So yeah, maybe start with one of those early or middle ones. I think these are great to get into Beethoven and in general to get into that whole period of classical music where it is not anymore Haydn or Mozart, it is already very much Beethoven but still not the late Beethoven which is a complete different world in itself. The next set of pieces that I would recommend are Bach pieces and specifically I would recommend the French suites. I think that these are quote unquote, the easiest. Of course, none of Bach pieces are easy, but I think that these are the simplest, the English ones and the partitas are way more complex. But um, these ones are pretty doable if you're getting into the world of suites and the different Baroque dances. I think this is a great introduction to that. Or also any prelude and fugue from the well-tempered clavia are a great introduction to this whole polyphonic world. In my beginner repertoire video, I mentioned the inventios and the slightly easier Bach pieces. And I think that once you've already gotten into those, the French suites and the well-tempered clavier are a great continuation of your study of Baroque repertoire. Another Baroque thing that I find a great repertoire piece is Amy Scarlatti Sonata. Scarlatti has written many, many sonatas, so there are many to choose from, from very easy to very hard. So find one that really fits your level and play it. Not only are they musically so beautiful and they, if you play it in a concert or in an exam or anything where you perform, they are so nice to listen to and so much fun to play, but also technically they work on many different technical areas, so they are very helpful and you could almost do them instead of a study because they all work on one particular technical aspect. 
So definitely look into the Scarlatti Sonata. Moving on from Beethoven, I would suggest a piece by Mendelssohn and I would suggest the Rondo Capriccioso by Mendelssohn. It is about a 10 minute long piece and it is one of the classic pieces by Mendelssohn that my former teacher used to give us in order to get introduced into his world. It starts with a slow introduction with a beautiful musical phrase where you can really work on building a phrase, on building the musical side of a, let's say, slow movement. It's just two pages. And then comes the fast bit, which sounds very virtuoso, but is not extremely hard. Again, it is definitely not easy, but it is very doable if you're slowly getting into Mendelssohn. So I think this is a very good piece to start with when you want to play something by Mendelssohn and you are an intermediate piano student. Also, you can program it at the end of a concert or at the end of a recital because it has a very virtuoso, beautiful ending that sounds very impressive and that the audience loves. Next, I would like to mention two pieces by Robert Schumann. One is the Abeck Variations. I think these are also one of the classic pieces that my teacher used to give us when we were starting out with this composer. They're called Abeck Variations because they are based on a theme of a, B, E, G, G. These are literally the notes. B in German meaning B flat. So it's A, B flat, E, G, G. That's the theme. And then there are variations on that theme. They're very beautiful. They're very, very virtuoso towards the end, but typically Schumann. Never easy to play, but still kind of intermediate level, especially compared to his later pieces. And the other piece by Schumann that I would recommend is Papillon. Papillon is also a variation piece. It means butterfly, incredibly beautiful, one of his earliest pieces and also something that I would recommend to study after his album for the youth, which I mentioned in my beginner video. In general, I will definitely link the beginner repertoire and also the piano technique repertoire video that I've already recorded and posted in the description box down below so you can also check that out. The next piece I would like to mention is by Maurice Ravel and it is called Jeu d'eau meaning water games in a way. I think you can imagine a little fountain and the water droplets dancing around. I think this is kind of what this piece sounds like and what it is supposed to depict. It's very beautiful and it's definitely an intermediate piece that sounds incredibly nice, that is doable and that you can program in any program. All these pieces that I'm mentioning are also pieces that you can play as an advanced player, but they are kind of these pieces that are the first step into that new repertoire. So for Ravel, I would definitely mention Judo. The next composer that I want to mention is Frédéric Chopin. For Chopin, I think that in my beginner video, I mentioned some easier waltzes and nocturnes. Obviously, you can get into some harder waltzes and nocturnes, but also I would like to mention two pieces that are definitely also leaning towards the more advanced, harder side, but that I think are great gateways to, into getting into that repertoire. And this is the first scherzo. It's probably the easiest of his scherzos and definitely demanding, but I think doable for you to get into the future ones as well, especially if you're investing a good amount of practice time. And I would also like to mention his first or second ballad. The third and the fourth one are definitely the hardest ones, but first or second, I think, are the ones that you could get into as an intermediate student. Again, these two, the scherzo and the ballad, are if you are more of a serious, let's say, intermediate student that definitely practices every day and that has some time to invest into that. But if you do have that, then it's totally worth it because they are very rewarding, musically incredibly beautiful and pieces that will definitely get you to the next level, musically and technically. Speaking about Chopin, something very important that I would suggest to any intermediate student is start getting into the Chopin studies. As you maybe know, if you've been watching my videos, I've made several videos about different Chopin studies and I would definitely recommend that you start practicing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student because you will probably have the technical skills that you need to start them. Don't be worried at all if you don't feel equipped to actually play through them. You don't need to do that, but you can start at a very slow tempo with the exercises. I will link all my Chopin study videos down below. I've talked about the method, how I learned the Chopin studies, and it is a very long and gradual 
process. I started out playing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student at the age of 10 or 11, and I started out very slowly. It took me definitely two years before I played through Opus 10 number one at the final tempo, but this is what the process was all about. When I did play through it, I felt incredibly secure and I felt like I could play it in my sleep. So definitely start practicing the Chopin studies, check out the exercises that I've mentioned. I've made videos on Opus 10 number one, two, Opus 10 number nine, I think, also several of the Opus 25 ones. So check them out. I think this will really, really help you advance with your technique. The next piece that I want to mention is by Karl Maria von Weber, and it is called Invitation to Dance, Aufforderung zum Tanz. It is also very beautiful, and I think the ideal intermediate piece kind of exactly in the middle between beginner and advanced so definitely something that you can master it also has its virtuoso moments and a great piece to program in any piano recital and a piece that will also build your technique and bring it to the next level the next piece that i want to mention is by Yenu Takash this is a composer who is not played that often, but he has written one toccata that I played a lot when I was an intermediate student and that was very effective. It sounds technically very hard, but it actually isn't. It's one of those pieces that are written so well and so pianistically that it is quite doable, although it sounds very hard. So if you're looking for a piece that sounds very impressive, but that you are pretty sure that you will actually be able to play then play that it is a little more on the modern side of things and a great piece for example as a virtuoso piece in an exam or in a competition or just for you to have fun with and then finally before i finish this video i want to mention some piano concertos because depending on what your plans are with the piano if you're looking to do this professionally or if you want to study it or if you might want to just build a bigger repertoire I would also like to mention some piano concertos. Of course, mostly intermediate students don't have the opportunity to perform with an orchestra, but you don't necessarily need an orchestra. You can do it with a string quartet. If you have friends that are playing string instruments, you can do it with a play along recording. When I was 11 or 12 years old, I was practicing my first piano concertos and just playing them with recordings, with a CD playing in the background and I was playing the piano solo part and I felt like I was playing with an orchestra. So you can do anything because piano concertos, of course, are incredible repertoire pieces and of course pieces where you can really advance because they are made for the pianist to shine on stage and to show everything all his abilities and all his musicality and technical abilities. So I would recommend some easier piano concertos. For example, Mozart's 414 piano concerto, a shorter one, very cute, incredibly beautiful, such a musical gem and something that you can definitely play at an intermediate level. The other piano concerto that I would recommend is Beethoven concerto number no. one. It is of course not easy, but compared to his other ones, much easier. It was one of the first piano concertos that I played actually when I was 12 years old. So beautiful, so much genius is in that concerto and I would definitely recommend getting into it even if it's just to further your knowledge of the composer and of the music. When I started out learning concertos, it wasn't because I had a date to play them with an orchestra on stage. It was just to get to know them. So I would definitely suggest to get to know piano concerto repertoire, even if you're not going to perform it because it is such beautiful repertoire. And then the last concerto that I would mention is Mendelssohn number no. one. This is quite a virtuoso concerto, but again, written pretty pianistically. So it is definitely doable. You do have to invest time in it. Um, don't be fooled, but still it is a doable one. And I think also one that is very beautiful once you have mastered it. So this was my personal selection of intermediate piano pieces. I know that I by no means have covered everything. This is just my personal selection, what I kind of grew up playing and what I saw people in my class playing as intermediate piano level students. But please add anything that you played when you were at an intermediate level or that you're playing right now. If you are at an intermediate level, also if you are a piano teacher, please add your repertoire. I think this is always valuable and always helpful for students and teachers alike to see which pieces work well in order for students to advance. 
and let me know what you thought of the pieces that I mentioned, if you've played any of them, if you found them helpful. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.